Hello, everyone. Jerry Shockey here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm the Director of Youth and Education here, and uh, we're excited to bring you another uh, program, kind of a condensed version of what we're, doing with the, what we're done with a number of our programs, our video conferencing programs that we connect out to schools. And right now we're connecting to homes of, of young people for webinars and things like that of all of our different programs. And so what we've taken is uh, maybe six or seven now, eight or so of our programs that are typically a 50 to 60 minute di di interaction. Uh, we've boiled them down to a 15 or 20 minute uh, just a recording, uh, no interaction with any students, but just something that we can post on our YouTube page. And for any teachers or parents or anybody like that that are looking for extra things for their students to do while they're at home, I'm a dad of two boys, third and sixth graders, so always looking for interesting things that uh, uh, that are relevant. And uh, uh, you know, uh, why not use football to uh, capture young people's interest? And so, uh, so we're going to boil this down to about a 15 or 20 minute program. And so, one of the things we always like to do before we get started with any program is give students a clear understanding of exactly who we are and what it is that we do. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share screen for you guys. And first of all, what you're gonna see is a map. So for those of you that are connecting in and watching this recording uh, from all over the country, all over the world, uh, here we are, Canton, Ohio, uh, home of the Pro Football of Fame. You can see where we are in relation to the United States and in Ohio, northeastern part, just about 60 or so miles south of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And we can zoom in and give you guys a view of our building. And then one of the interesting things here is Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. And so this is where the annual Hall of Fame game is played. Uh, this year's game is going to feature the Dallas Cowboys versus the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, at uh, Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium on Thursday, August 6th. And then we have the enshrinement ceremony on Saturday, August 8th. that will be at the stadium and our concert on, for Legends on Sunday. And so a lot of exciting things going to be taking place here uh, in August at, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So but one of the things we like to do with every group is just give them a clear understanding of exactly who we are again, and what it is we do. And so you saw where we are at. Uh, and today's program that we're going to talk about is really, it's called America's Game. It's NFL and media. And we talk about media, there's a lot of things that come to mind. So we'll get to that here in just a moment. But before we do that, one of the things we like to do, and we'll skip over this video just for the sake of time. Again, it's a three minute vid video over the uh, Hall's mission, vision, values, and everything that football stands for. But our mission here at the Pro Football of Fame is to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence everywhere. Our vision is not just about the past, it's, it's the future, it's, it's you young people. It's not just about Canton, so it's not just about doing programs here in Canton, Ohio and for a local audience, it's about the world. It's not just a great museum for football, it's a message of excellence everywhere. Our values are commitment, integrity, courage, respect and excellence. In typical programs, we kind of build those out a little bit more, uh, but again, for the sake of time, we're going to just uh, leave it at that, but today, uh, what we're going to talk about is the NFL and media. Uh, and we title this program called America's Game. And really when we think of media, probably a lot of things come to your mind when you think of media. Probably for young people, first thing you think of is social media, obviously. You could think of print media, so newspapers, magazines, you know, those kind of print medias. You can think of electronic media, like digital media, and, and including social media. You could think of TV. You can think of radio. But today we're going to focus in on is, is, is the NFL and television because it's had the biggest influence, obviously. And now social media obviously is, is right up there as well as we saw millions and millions of people watch Super Bowl this year uh, and digested that through a platform of, of, of using some type of uh, streaming device to do that. And so, uh, but today we're still going to focus on because TV is still king. TV is where the NFL generates most of its money, uh, majority of its money, and so uh, a large chunk of its money, I should say. And so we're going to look at that. So, uh, you know, you see a Super Bowl this year, over 100 million watched it. And when you combine the TV ratings along with the, um, uh, the streaming ratings, uh, you know, some years as high as 115, 120 million. That's average viewership. There's peaks of 140, 150 million total viewers throughout the program. Uh, so the Super Bowl phenomenon, uh, you know, how did it get its start and how did the NFL become so popular? Uh, because Football wasn't that popular uh, going back in the day. So we're going to start there. If anybody knows, the very first TV broadcast, this is what we're going to take it back to, is October 22nd, 1939. The first game is broadcast on TV on NBC. And it was the Brooklyn Dodgers played the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Brooklyn Dodgers are like, isn't that a baseball team? Wasn't that a baseball team? And it was. So a lot of NFL teams you see, there was the Pittsburgh Steelers, there's the Cincinnati Reds, uh, there are the Cleveland Indians, there are the New York Yankees. Uh, there are all kinds of NFL teams that were named after baseball teams, uh, really just to capitalize upon the popularity uh, of, of, of baseball. Because at that time, during the 20s and 30s, uh, pro football was not the most popular sport. It wasn't even close. Uh, it was baseball and college football was just as popular at that time as well. 
pro football during the 30s, once TV got introduced and things like that, started becoming more and more popular. Where in 1965, you'll see, according to a Harris poll, pro football took over as the number one sport in America, the most watched sport in America. And we'll see that. And there's a bunch of beautifully timed events that took place. And again, we're just going to kind of speed through this just to give you a light uh, overview of everything. Uh, as we look in the 40s of uh, football during World War II, just like all sports, uh, football is struggling. The NFL lost uh, 600 players who joined the armed forces uh, for the draft during that time. And, and just like other companies, uh, NFL teams were struggling to find players. And so some teams even merged. So you had the Steelers merge with the Eagles, and they became the Steagles. And now that team did pretty well in 1943. 1944, though, the Steelers end up doing again. They eventually merged with the Chicago Cardinals. And if you look at that word down at the bottom right of your screen, you see card pit. Okay, so anybody that's tuning in, say that real fast, 10 times fast. Carpet, 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 carpet. What's it sound like you're saying? I'll wait, let you pause for a second. What's it sound like you're saying? That's right, carpets. Uh, and that's the nickname they got because they were so bad. They didn't win a game. They were known as the carpets because teams walked all over them. So uh, kind of an interesting story that took place during that time. Now, during the 40s and 50s, what you saw is teams actually negotiated their own contracts. Uh, you saw the L.A. Rams became the first team to broadcast all games through Admiral TV back in 1950. You saw George Hallis uh, sells rights for, for Bears games for 750 plus a game. Uh, you saw CBS become the first network to broadcast some regular season games to selected markets across the country. But then in 1958, something really captivated uh, the national audience because as football is starting to gain more and more popularity, you had these two dominant teams in the 58, the Baltimore Colts versus the New York football giants. Baltimore Colts led by a bunch of Hall of Famers, but uh, led by the, some that's very, still very popular with young people today, John, the great Johnny Unitas. You had the, the Giants were headlined by the, this defense led by Sam Huff. They also had Frank Gifford. Uh, so this game was exciting to begin with. There were more. It was just starting to ca you know, captivate a national audience. It went on national TV. It became the first sudden death overtime game in NFL playoff history. It was played in Yankee Stadium where over 64,000 people watched it in person and over 45 million people watched it on TV. There were 17 future Hall of Famers that were actually involved in that game. Uh, like Guys like Vince Lombardi and Tom Landry, Lenny Moore, uh, 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 Raymond Berry, you know, we could go on and on. Sam Huff, Frank Gifford, all these different players. You, you, you hear about Emma Tunnell, other players. And so uh, you saw that take place during that time. So it really captivated an audience. So, uh, and, and again, these videos we have for you, we'll skip over them today. Uh, they're just videos of the game. You can go search them out right now if you search 58 Championship, greatest game ever played. Um, you can find YouTube videos. So I don't need to play those for you today. Uh, but as we move on into the 60s, you saw there was something that took place was the AFL and NFL merger. And so the AFL come about a few different times and rivaled against the NFL and eventually didn't do well and eventually folded. Uh, so it was assumed in the 60s, when the, in the 1960, when the AFL started again, that it wasn't going to be around for long. Uh, well, it was TV, that the TV deals the AFL signed uh, that really pushed the two to end up uh, talking about merging because there was all kinds of things. Uh, this merger, uh, you know, they were competing against for contracts and draft picks. You could saw, see Gail Sayers was drafted fifth overall in the AFL by the Kansas City Chiefs and also fourth overall in the NFL by Chicago Bears. And both sides realized that they had to do something to come up with that, uh, to, to come up with a plan. And so they eventually merged. Uh, they come up with a common draft before that. Uh, and then it started off in 1966. Uh, the AFL-NFL championship game. And by the third Super Bowl, it came to coin the term the Super Bowl and for Super Bowl three. And so uh, obviously the AFL-NFL merger. And again, if you search this AFL-NFL merger, you'll find this video. Uh, and again, we'll skip over that just for the sake of time here today to make sure we're getting through everything. There are other innovations that came about in TV. If you, if you ever read about the Heidi Bowl, and again, you can watch this video at some point, just search Heidi Bowl on YouTube and you can see what took place. But November 17, 1968, the Oakland Raiders versus the New York Jets with one minute and five seconds left in the fourth quarter, uh, the Jets had a lead. But the Oakland Raiders scored two touchdowns in nine seconds to come back and beat the Jets. But guess what? Nobody saw it because they, they, they went to a commercial break and cut to Heidi because the game concluded uh, as far as the time slot. They switched. The TV executives decided to switch to the, 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 the movie Heidi, uh, and um, fans never got to watch the end of it. And if you can imagine football fans, uh, they were a little upset. 
uh, with that. And so uh, the, the eventually um, it transitioned television to actually show the entirety of the game uh, and even pass the, those slots, whether it's one to four Eastern time or four to seven Eastern time, whatever those time slots might be, that if the game does run over, that they'll continue showing it, which is obviously a good thing to do today, as crazy as people are about football. And again, there's a video, a documentary on that. You can, you can look there as well. Uh, as we move into the 70s, obviously many of you know Monday Night Football. And it's really amazing about Monday Night Football because uh, the other networks actually refused, the bigger networks, NBC and CBS. They refused to give up their time slots. They had other scheduled programs at that time. They didn't think football could be, pro football could be played on a Monday night. You know, you think of football, you think Friday night's high school, you think Saturday's college, you think Sunday's the NFL. Nowadays, it's getting switched up because we're used to seeing Monday Night Football, Thursday night games, and, and all that. So that's being, uh, but at that time, to, to do this was really, um, it, was a, it was a leap of faith, uh, both by the NFL as well as uh, uh, ABC uh, to give up that, that prime time slot uh, to show football. Well, as we know, it, um, uh, as the rest they say is history. Monday Night Football went on to become the second longest running uh, prime time show behind CBS 60 Minutes. And so, and again, there's a great documentary on that. And I wish I could show you all these videos uh, that come along with the pay, uh, 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 that come along with uh, the, this program. But again, you can search those. Uh, but because of historic moments like the AFL merger, the popular Super Bowl, Monday Night Football, TV deals are becoming more and more expensive. We see in 1970, there's a four-year deal with CBS NBC worth 156 million. 1982, there's a five-year deal with those networks for two billion. So you kind of see those escalate, and you see a pretty big jump between those 12-year 12, 12 uh, period. Uh, 1990, four-year deal with ABC, CBS, NBC, TNT worth 3.6 million. 1998, look at that. CBS, ABC, Fox, ESPN, worth about $17.6 billion. But where does that leave us today? In 2011, CBS, NBC, Fox signed a deal worth about $3 billion per year. ESPN continued their deal for $1.9 billion per year. Uh, DirecTV, uh, DirecTV is about $1.5 billion per year. Uh, Fox Thursday night games, 660 million per year. Amazon streaming now, Thursday night games, uh, about 10 million per year. And you, so you just look at those numbers, you know, with the total amount of money in the TV deals, you could buy the Chiefs, Titans, Panthers, Bucks, Dolphins, Seahawks, Steelers, go on and on. You could buy every ticket at average price that was sold for Super Bowl 76 times. You could tour the Hall of Fame uh, over 1 billion times. Uh, and so there's just, uh, you can just see how much money is generated, how much revenue is generated. Uh, per year through all these, uh, these different D TV deals. And, and so why is that? Why, is, why are these networks so willing to pay this kind of money? It's because fans watch the game. Uh, how do networks make money? Obviously, cable companies through subscriptions. Some cable companies are able to do uh, uh, TV commercials as well. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, you know, uh, public television, CBS, NBC, uh, ABC, those networks, as they, as they sign deals with the NFL, they make their money back on, 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 obviously, mostly on TV commercials and things like that. And the reason why is exactly this, the ratings of the NFL. Uh, if you look at, look at this comparison, 2018 Hall of Fame game. Now, mind you, this is the first preseason game. This is not even a, a regular season game. This is a preseason game. A 4.1 TV rating. If you compare that to the Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Eastern Conference Finals, NBA Western Conference Finals, ALCS, NLCS, Indianapolis 500, you look at those ratings for those years, a preseason game outdrew those. That's the reason why the NFL is able because of the popularity, how many people. Let's look at 2019. Most watched regular season games. Cowboys versus Bills week 13. 32.6 million viewers. Cowboys versus the Patriots, week 12, 29.5 million viewers. Chiefs versus Patriots, 28.1 million viewers. NFC Conference Championship for 2019. Average viewers for a game, 49 million viewers. That's almost triple the average number of viewers for the entire 2019 uh, NBA Finals at 20.5 million. Uh, other areas that they're growing in is still the Pro Bowl, the AFC, NFC, as they adjust the Pro Bowl, 7.9 uh, million viewers. What's the other thing you can think of? Obviously, the NFL draft. Obviously, it went, uh, it went virtual this year. It wasn't in person, but it still it did huge ratings uh, this year. For the second time ever, the draft was broadcast in 2019 on television to change the TV ratings of the draft. The combined viewership of ABC and ESPN NFL Network totaled 11.1 .1 million and 7.0 ratings for the first night of the draft. Across all Nielsen major channels, that draft telecast combined to reach more than 47.5 47 million viewers 
over the three days. This is a 5% increase from 2018. In all, look at this, the entire draft had a 3.9 household rating and an average of 6.1 million viewers. And that's for 2019. It's the highest rated and most watched broad draft ever. Those numbers are coming in now for 2020 and they look to be even higher. Obviously the Super Bowl phenomenon, you look at ratings, there's no greater sporting event in the world than, than the, for a three hour, four hour program than the Super Bowl. Uh, you can see their Super Bowl uh, 54 drew an audience of 100.45 million and an overnight rating of 41.6 million. 3.4 million people live stream the game. Uh, a 30.7 increase from 20, 20, 2019 and a new record. Look at this, 43.9 million social media interactions across the game, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram during the game. That's a 35.9% increase. These are numbers that, 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 that are good numbers when we talk about why the NFL is so popular. Top social media mi minute of the telecast on social media uh, was 826 EST, 144,000 tweets as halftime show concluded. So you see the Super Bowl. Uh, you see the uh, Jennifer Lopez Shakira's halftime show peaked at 103.2 million, up from 4% uh, from Room 5 in 2019. They're the first Latin uh, American artist to co-headline the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, you have the Super Bowl ad commercials. You have the Groundhog Days, uh, Loretta, Cool Ranch, you know, all the comfortable next 100 um, and this. But if you look at the Super Bowl throughout history, it dominates the most watched broadcast in NFL history. Look at the top, the top five programs you see there. You know, like I said, 115 million average viewership. 19 of the 20 top broadcasts are Super Bowl games throughout the history. The nine Super Bowl in the top 20 is actually MASH, which is really impressive in 1983 to have 105.9 million viewers because there weren't as many television sets at that time. So hats off to MASH. I love MASH growing up, so uh, I'm a big fan. So, but, uh, but you just get the idea of just how dominant uh, the NFL is when it comes to, 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 to uh, uh, its popularity. And so why is football? And there's, this is a question that anyone can ask. You know, why is football so, so popular? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop share here uh, and just share this with you. I mean, there's a lot of reasons uh, you can look at. Uh, number one is just the nature of the game. Something about people we enjoy. We enjoy combat sports, you know. We enjoy going back to Roman gladiators, you know. It's just always fans have always been a big fan of, of, of just uh, the, 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 those battles. And there's no more battle per square inch as there is in the NFL. As soon as that ball is snapped, you have 11 players uh, colliding against each other. And you see strategy and all these things that come into play uh, that just – that just really uh, captivates an audience the game. This is coming from a guy, I never played a down of organized football. I've been here for the Pro Football Fame for 20 years. Been a huge fan of the NFL uh, all my life. Just never played. I played baseball, basketball, soccer, and golf. So I've loved all sports, but nothing's funner to watch on TV uh, than, than football. Uh, just the way it's set up, the, the quick pause, the quick burst, just uh, the tempo of the game, just so many things about the nature of the game that just make it so fun to watch but then you also look at one of the big reasons as compared to the other sports especially baseball is you have competitive balance right now in the nfl you know no other team no other league uh at least you know especially when you compare it to something like baseball or something like that where you can have the green bay packers who for the past 20 plus years have been very competitive every year in such a small market and that's because there's a ceiling in a basement and all teams if you look at and you can go to forbes and magazine or something like that there's some other websites that are out there just search uh, NFL draft ceilings and, and basements or, or total payroll. Compare that to other sports to see how, how much there's a difference. Other sports uh, in baseball, you could have, you know, $200 million difference between teams where in the NFL, you have teams very close to each other as far, how, as far as how much. So you have a case where every team has a shot. And that's the beautiful thing about the NFL is that you look at every year, every team has a shot in the NFL. I've been a Steeler fan for many years and the Steelers have been very competitive. Well, guess what? Pittsburgh is not a very big city uh, compared to New York or Chicago or Houston or LA or some of these big markets that are out there, uh, Phoenix, other places like that. And so, um, you know, small market teams like Green Bay, uh, where there's, you know, almost as many or as many uh, fans that come into the stadium as there are in Green Bay. You know, it's just crazy how many people and what diehard fans Packer fans are. Uh, and so you just see that in the NFL and, and that, 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 that loyalty to teens because, uh, every year, you, you can make an argument. I could look at the NFL uh, season next year and 
legitimately say there could be 16 teams that potentially win. Now, certainly there's some favorites uh, with, you know, the Chiefs, obviously. We'll see about the Patriots, you know, with transitions. We'll see about that. Uh, obviously, Buccaneers. But you got, I mean, you could say the Steelers. I mean, there's a lot of teams you could say uh, that could have an opportunity uh, to win the Super Bowl or at least be in the playoffs next year. Uh, and so in other sports, you can't say that you kind of – sometimes in, in other sports you have a, uh, a couple teams that might sneak in for a few years uh, that are from smaller markets in that mix. Uh, but consistently, it's usually the bigger market teams that are usually in there most consistently as far as uh, postseason play. And so that's the beauty of the NFL. And so this is just a quick highlight. Uh, I'm throwing a lot at you in a little bit of time. I see we're at about 20 minutes. Uh, so I want to conclude here. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed here today. If there's teachers out there watching, parents, uh, email us at education at profootball hof.com let your teachers know about these programs these video conferencing programs that once schools get back in session in the fall we can connect with your students in the classroom and talk about all of our great programs whether it's uh, movement in motion whether it's science football whether it's career in the nfl whether it's character education whether it's history uh, or whether it's you know kind of a history economics tie-in here today with nfl and media uh, so this concludes our program i want to say thank you to everyone take care and, and god bless you